Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? More and more people are collecting retro video games, but should you get into the hobby? And where's the best place to find those vintage titles anyway? Now, collecting retro video games isn't really anything new. I think it's just changed a lot in purpose in recent years. I mean, we've always heard plenty of stories about people who have had tons of video games from even back in the 80s. You know, they, they were just a fan of a platform and happened to buy a bunch um, from, from a particular series, you know, whether it's Super NES or, or Genesis or whatever. And back then, it was really just, well, because you like the games, right? There were probably a few people that did it for the kind of the concept of, of having a complete collection, you know, completionism, that, that is a thing. But when you're paying full price for a title, you know, back then, that was no cheap thing. You generally had to have a real passion to collect a significant number of titles. So in general, you know, back in the, in the 80s and early mid 90s, it was really more just because somebody really liked those games. They liked that platform and carried them with them till, till now. But what we've seen in probably the last maybe five years, I'd say, is a radical change in the concept of game collecting, why people do it, what they do it for, and how they collect. Now, I've talked kind of about this topic before, um, actually a couple of years ago, where I discussed the curve in pricing of retro games, how games as they age start out, you know, full price, you know, whether that's 50, 60 or so dollars when a game is brand new, and then that price drops as time goes on, and then that title becomes a couple of generations old. You know, it's no longer for the latest platform. It may be one generation back or even two generations back when it gets really cheap, you know, and that's when you're able to find these games for five to 10 bucks, uh, you know, bargain bin kind of titles. They've been around for six, seven, eight, maybe 10 years. They're very inexpensive at that point. And then as time goes on from there, the prices start to come back up. And that's all due to nostalgia. I'll include a link to that video if you want to watch it. Be gentle, it's one of my earlier works, but I think the point still stands. But what we're starting to see now is a more rapid succession kind of through those generations. It's, it's not so much that, you know, hey, now the PS4 is out, so even fewer people are interested in the PS2, so those games have dropped in price. In just the span of five or six years, we've seen a number of older consoles really see a sharp rise in popularity again. And that's, I think, because the overall concept of collecting video games is on the rise. Part of that, I think, is because you've got a generation of people who didn't grow up playing those old titles. You know, they, they, they were born in the 90s or God, even the early 2000s, I'm making myself feel old here, but they, never, they were never around in the 80s and early 90s to play those games. So they may be getting bored with current titles, current consoles, and seeing all of these old titles, these old consoles as just ripe for exploration, you know? They want something fresh and new to them. So that represents, you know, a really good opportunity. I, I think it's kind of like how every, every generation kind of goes through this period where you end up listening to the music your parents listen to for a time, you know? It's not music that you grew up with. It wasn't new when you were young. But for some reason, it sounds fresh and interesting to you, maybe because you're bored with the top 40 of the day, that sort of thing. The other thing I think with retro gaming, in terms of collecting that we've started to see is, sad to say, it's kind of become a bit of a contest um, where you've seen people start to collect these titles 
either for just the sake of saying, yeah, I've got a complete collection of NES games, or because they're thinking that it might be some sort of investment. So let's talk about that first part in terms of, you know, just doing it to show off. Um, the people who do that sort of thing to show off, I think at least are just as likely to collect something else for the purposes of showing off. Um, you know, they're, they're the kind of people, it, it, you know, it's like, think of it as, as like a modern day version of collecting stamps or collecting coins you know, collecting artwork, something like that. You know, it's just, it's, it's those sorts of collections yeah, for younger people, maybe. Um, you know, you, you feel the sense of completeness by doing it, maybe. Um, maybe it's just a source of pride to say, yeah, I've got one of every NES title. Some of them are incredibly rare and hard to find, but you know, you've got one. So you're, you're kind of in your mind part of this elite club or, or something like that. And um, other people do it, and I think a lot of people do, do it if they are just going for a complete collection. They do it for the journey because collecting is a challenge. You know, it's not like you can just go to GameStop or go to a local retro game store, jump on eBay, whatever, and buy a complete collection of every title for a certain platform. That you don't, you can't really do that. It takes some digging, it takes some research, it takes some time, it takes some luck. So it's, it's all about like the thrill of the hunt, really, where, yeah, the first, I don't know, 75% maybe of the titles are gonna be pretty easy. They'll be pretty easy, they'll be pretty cheap to get, but that last 25% is gonna take some time and some research and a lot of digging to find you know, a copy that's acceptable to you. Maybe you come across one, you just stumble across one one day, maybe in an unlikely place. You know, Maybe there's a copy of a su super rare game that you stumble across at a garage sale and the people don't know what they're selling and you pick up this game that could be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars for all of like 10 bucks. Now the ethics of video game collecting are completely kind of different and detached from how you go about doing it. I think the ethics of doing it are kind of universal regardless of what your intention is in terms of, you know, in a scenario like that where somebody is selling something and they don't know what they have and they have it grossly underpriced, you know, the, the, capitalist, the, the capitalist side says, yeah, screw them, you know, they don't, it's their fault for not doing their research, you know. If it's worth a thousand bucks and they only want ten dollars, well, you know, they, they get their ten bucks and that's what it is. Uh, the more empathetic type of side, the, the, the I don't know, uh, the, more, the more polite, the more cordial, whatever kind of side might say, no, nah, you know what, that's, you might be getting a screaming deal out of that, but whether that person realizes it or not, they, they could be seen as being taken advantage of if they're selling something that cheap. Um, when the value of it is much higher. So, you know, you might want to then say, well, look, here's the deal with this thing. I'll offer you this much money, you know, kind of kind of strike a balance in the middle where you're still getting a good deal, but you're not totally screwing them over. So you've got the collectors that do it just because they want a collection. And I think they're the ones who may start to kind of rapid fire go through but you've also got kind of the pseudo collectors, the, the half collectors, people who say, you know what, I don't need every single game from this title, you know, from this, from this platform, this, this console. I don't need every single title. I just want the ones that maybe paint the best picture as to what that console was about. Obviously, for the most part, those are going to be the more popular titles because they kind of represent the era of when that console was new, when that console was relevant. What were the games that the majority of people were playing on it? So you can kind of understand what it was like, maybe if you didn't live through that era, or maybe you lived through that era, but you never got into it, and you just kind of want to reminisce from a different perspective. You know, what, what were the Super NES kids playing 
when you had your Genesis and, and vice versa. And I think that may be what's fueling the quick rise in popularity of all these various platforms. You know, uh, obviously the, the Super NES and the original NES and the Genesis were going to become big, but I mean, we're starting to see in pretty quick succession the N64 and the GameCube, those games start to go for some serious money. Um, I think we'll start to see the original PlayStation and PlayStation 2 start to go for more serious money. It may not become that serious of money simply because some games have been re-released as like ports or virtual console type titles, that sort of thing. So the demand for the original media may not be quite as much for those people who just want to experience the game versus those games that were only ever available that one time on that cartridge or that disc and never released again or never released in their original form again. It's why copies of Conker's Bad Fur Day for the N64 still command decent prices because the second time it got released for the Xbox, it was tweaked, it was changed. It was actually kind of toned down a little bit from its N64 version, which I think is kind of humorous because the Xbox always seemed to be the more adult type of platform, whereas the N64 was more child oriented. So for Conquer on the N64 to be more <laughs> irreverent and crass and, and you know, more objectionable to some people than a toned down version of it on the original Xbox, I just think is kind of funny. So you've got all these different types of collectors. Where do you go to find games? Let's say you want to get into it. You've never played a GameCube before. Where do you go to, to pick up both the hardware and the software for it? And the, those numbers have been diversifying in recent years as well. Uh, the classic source for a number of number of years has been places like uh, yard sales or garage sales or flea markets. You can potentially get the best deals at places like those where you've got people who just have a bunch of junk and maybe some of the junk they have to sell are old video games. You know, they're just cleaning out the attic. The kids have already moved out. The kids don't care or remember that they had you know, a stack, a, a stack of Super NES games or whatever up there. And mom's like, you know what, I want to get rid of this crap. So she says everything's a dollar each or whatever. You can get some really good deals that way, but it's much more of a crapshoot. That's where that whole thrill of the hunt thing comes into play. If you've got a specific title or a couple of titles on your mind that you want, you will spend a lot of time going to garage sales and flea markets before you will ever find a copy of that for sale, maybe at a decent condition that you want or at a price you want or whatever. Now, there are resellers at flea markets. If you're a fan of the Pat the NES Punk channel, I really like Pat. I think he's got a nice balanced opinion about a lot of stuff, even though he can kind of go overboard at times. But he's got this series that he does called Flea Market Madness, where he'll go out with like a GoPro to a flea market and show all the different gaming deals that he finds. And he'll identify some people are just legitimate sellers. They've just got stuff they want to unload it. And other times there are resellers. People who may have even bought things at that same flea market turn around and are trying to flip them for a profit. So you do have to watch out for those. They will tend to have a better selection, but you're gonna pay for it. The other place where you will often end up having to pay a dear amount of money for retro stuff is online, eBay in particular. eBay, you're going to have the best selection, I think. It's, it's much more likely you'll find what you want, unless it's incredibly rare. Even if it's somewhat rare, chances are, whatever you're looking for, there's at least one of up on eBay right now. But because all those prices are public, and all the sellers who are serious about selling watch what everybody else has sold their same thing for, those prices are going to be some of the highest that you will pay. There's also a bit of risk because unlike with a flea market or a garage sale or even a brick and mortar store, if you're buying it on eBay, it's kind of sight unseen. You're at the mercy of how well the seller describes the item 
and how good of pictures they take, and then to some extent, their feedback rating, although feedback on eBay has kind of turned into a load of crap. So it's, it's a little bit of a buyer beware on eBay. You, you will probably find what you want, but you're gonna pay maybe more than you should for it, and it may not be in as good of condition as you hoped when or if you get it. There are, of course, scammers on eBay as well. You have to watch out for them, but that kind of cuts across anything you could buy on eBay, so that's not unique to retro gaming. Where I like to find retro stuff, and I think this strikes the nicest balance across all the stuff, uh, you know, all the, all the different places you can buy them, is like local retro game stores, or maybe they're chains, but places like Half Price Books where it's a local supply of that item, where you're not you know, trying to find something off the internet and you're not going through that real crapshoot of does this garage sale even have video games at it? You know, maybe the garage sale advertises we have video games, but you don't even know what platform they're for. If you've got a brick and mortar, you can go there maybe once a week and look through the case and see what they've got. Chances are they'll have staff that will be somewhat knowledgeable about what they have. And you can even ask them, you know, hey, I want to get into the GameCube or whatever platform. Can you recommend the top three or four titles that I should be looking for? And if it's a dedicated retro game store, of which more and more keep popping up, they'll know, they'll be able to say, you know, look out for these titles. These, I think, are the most fun or these are the most enjoyable, that sort of thing. And they'll, also give you the opportunity to kind of develop a rapport where if you are a serious collector and there's a couple of titles that are uncommon that you are looking out for, if you are going to these places every week or so and you're pretty consistently buying things, you're going to get to know the staff. And the staff are going to appreciate you as a frequent buyer as you know, a frequent customer, you're probably spreading the word to your friends about, hey, you should go to this one store if you want retro games because they're good. After a while, you'll develop a rapport with the staff where you know, maybe they'll be willing to start looking out for you. Maybe they'll get a copy of that rare game that you've been looking for for six months to a year. And instead of just throwing it on the shelf, maybe they'll set it aside for a week for when you come in. And you'll come in and they'll be like, hey, hey, you know, we just got this in, you know, you want first dibs at it. Maybe they'll give you a decent deal on it, maybe not. But the idea is you've got somebody who's kind of helping you out, which people at flea markets and garage sales and eBay, they don't really care. It's that personal connection, which is nice. Plus you've got the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping a local business and all that. And you've got better chance of finding what you're looking for than at least a flea market or a garage sale because it's a place where video games are sold, right? You can like look through all the display cases and see everything they've got instead of having to hop from house to house through garage sales and all that and just, you know, roll the dice. You've got a better chance at a store. Pricing is going to be dependent on the way the store operates. I've seen some that have had really, really good selection, but they're eBay prices. At least in that case, you get the benefit of looking at what you're buying first, and sometimes they'll throw in a warranty as well, which is really nice. Other times they may not have as awesome of selection, but they're cheaper than eBay, which I really like. And again, maybe they'll throw in a warranty, or at least they'll let you thoroughly inspect the item. Any decent retro game store is gonna let you inspect the item before you buy it up to and including actually putting it in a console to ensure that it works, which they should have done anyway, but maybe they'll let you do it. And they should also be willing to open up cartridges so you can see the PCB inside to make sure that it's not fake. That's become an increasing problem as of late. There is one other factor that is a bit of an unknown, and that are these large gaming chains starting to sell retro games. And I don't wanna get into this too much because there, it's kind of been talked about to death, but an example is GameStop is starting to sell retro games. The prices can be expensive, and they claim to go through and inspect the games and clean them and quote unquote refurbish them and make sure that they're legit and all that. 
Whether they do that or not, I don't really know, simply because we have heard some horror stories about people spending a lot of money on rare games, used games, from GameStop and gotten fakes. Maybe those are just a few one-offs. Maybe it's not prevalent. Maybe they've got a really good track record. It's just they're too new to be able to tell. So that's just something I guess to keep in mind. I wouldn't consider buying anything like that online, any sort of online, wherever it's from, to be any better than buying from eBay. If you want the best reassurance and the best shot at getting what you want, and at a decent price, but maybe not an amazing deal, I still think a local retro store is gonna be your best option. So at this point, I'm curious, what do you think? Are you a big collector? Do you just pick up what you're interested in? Or are you going for the full thing? And where do you buy your games? What have been your experiences? Shout out down in the comments below. Also, I'm always interested in getting more ideas and topics for these podcasts. So be sure to hit me up with your suggestions down below as well. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me out quite a bit. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcom. And as always, thanks for watching.